a, I wanted to talk about this CNN clip. I think it's pretty interesting that uh, these people have not figured out the facts of the case, nor do they really care. But there's something interesting in here, and it looks like uh, George Zimmerman may be going after these people, and I really hope he does. So let's, let's take a listen. What Zimmerman said about him as a victim here. I certainly was a victim when I was having my head bashed into the concrete and my nose broken and beaten. So I, I wouldn't say I was not a victim. Um, and I try not to think about that too much because I, there's nothing I can do about being a victim or not being a victim. That was, of course, to CNN's Chris Cuomo this morning. I mean, Nancy, I watched that as it unfurled this morning on CNN. It was simmering rage, I have to say. The whole idea of a banner headline from an interview with George Zimmerman, headlined, Zimmerman, I was a victim. Well, maybe the jury would agree with George Zimmerman that he was a victim. What do you make of it? Well, it's very, very disturbing. And frankly, he's got a lot of nerve because Trayvon Martin is dead. At least Zimmerman is going to get to get out and do his artwork online and sell it for a hundred grand and have his groupies and his website and all of his boxing matches for charity, while Trayvon Martin is never getting out of his coffin. Zimmerman needs to just go away and stop rubbing salt in my wound. I hope that he sticks around for a long time for no other reason than to rub salt in her wounds. Let me go to you, Van Jones. I want to play another clip here. This is where Zimmerman talks about the night itself and his feelings about what he perhaps should have done. You know, I think about that night, and I think I, my life would be tremendously easier if I had stayed home. I mean, again, Van Jones, what struck me was the sort of narcissism of all this. Really, all he's thinking about is his own life, yeah, him that'd... being a victim, him being easier at home, when Trayvon Martin, a 17-year-old unarmed teenager, is yeah. dead. You know, I, I'm sure that in his own mind he feels somehow victimized, but honestly, you would expect at this point for him to be able to show enough class and enough dignity to not try to seize that mantle and that mandate and to talk more about the harm and the pain and the suffering of the Trayvon Martin family. And when you don't see that and you see the other stuff that he's been doing, whether it's the arrest, this other sort of stuff, you just feel like, you know, not only did the guy get away with it, he doesn't seem to have learned very much. And I think that You know, you got to wonder, here you are trying to protect your community and this guy comes and beats your head on the concrete and says he's going to kill you. And now these people are on CNN saying that he has no cooth, that he has no no understanding and that they that he has no feelings for Trevon Martin's family. Listen, when you're on the ground and the guy's trying to kill you, do you care about his family? I mean, really? And if his family comes to you and says, "Why did you kill my son?" What are you going to say? Because he was trying to kill me. That's why. And if your other son comes over and does the same thing, I kill him too. That's what really hurts uh, people who care about this whole situation is that hopefully the country learned something, but apparently Zimmerman did not. Ben Ferguson, we're Wait, you actually expected Zimmerman to learn something? Why do they even let her talk? I mean, has she said anything of any value? I mean, what? One on, can there pray. were reams and reams of reams where he wanted to catch a black youth. Well, he did it and he shot him dead. I don't expect him to learn anything. Reams and reams, where? See, these are why George Zimmerman will be suing these people. They lie. Yeah. Okay, well. Ben Ferguson, can you construct yeah. for me any form of rational defense for the way Zimmerman is currently behaving? Well, I do think he's a victim of his own stupidity at this point. I mean, this happens to you, and you could say, look, I'm a victim of the obsession of the spotlight on this case. You might say I'll never be able to live in total without worrying that someone's going to try to come after me. You could say you're a victim because your head was cracked on the skull on the concrete over and over again, and somebody was trying to kill you until you finally pull out your gun. Yes, that would be a victim. But that is the extent of it. But I don't understand why he doesn't realize, mm -hmm. just go away. Just walk away from the cameras. You don't have to do the interviews. You don't have to sit down and tell your story. And you're not, your story is not a sad story. The media is so upset, but they keep shoving the camera in his face. 
why does he keep coming out and talking on the camera? Well, you keep shoving it in his face. You're not some sort of victim from what happened after the fact. Now, that night, to be honest with you, no one really wants to hear about you becoming a victim, regardless of the fight, regardless of, of the possible screams for help, regardless of the facts of the case. I don't There's think a certain he point wants to where live I think in you anonymity. Have to say, I don't think he I'm going to walk that. away from this. Let me, but Nancy, before I come back to you, Nancy, let me just uh, talk about something that happened with me and George Zimmerman today. So I got into a Twitter uh, exchange with him after I tweeted, you're not a victim. George Zimmerman, you're somebody who killed a 17-year-old boy, and that's indisputably what he is. Oh, really? Oh, really? He's not a victim? Whether you agree with the final verdict or not, everyone knows and he accepts he killed, he killed a boy. Right. Uh, yeah, I wonder. You know, there are military men that are injured after they, they, were, kill, they were killing people. Policemen killing people and then got injured or shot to death was that policeman a victim of the criminals that were trying to kill him even though he killed some of them that's ridiculous of course he's a victim and is it wrong to kill i mean it, it, watch you're gonna see who it turned thing. out was unarmed he replied this god bless you you will be in my prayers which is a thing so george is trying to be nice to him god bless you I'll be in, you know, you'll be in my prayer. Uh, his interview with Chris Cuomo was, only God now. can judge me, it's between me and him now. Nancy, that kind of religious defence, and I'll come to some of the other tweets between me and Zimmerman in a moment, but him relying on his religion, on his faith, on God, that he's only really now answerable to God. What did you make of that? Well, I really don't think God and Jesus really want to be dragged into Jordan. Well, I think that Pierce doesn't realize it, but George was acquitted 100%. That means he is not accountable to you or to anybody else. And Pierce Morgan, you have no right to be judging anybody. You have been kicked out of your own country. The fact you're even here is because we allow it. George Zimmerman's tweeting with you, but... Uh, since you brought it up, I think that he's in a position where he doesn't know what to say back. And you were talking about how somebody wants about him suffering because he can't live in anonymity. He doesn't want anonymity. Yeah, he doesn't want because he has to keep coming back and straightening out your bullshit statements. Look at her mouth. It's just, you know that when those lips are moving, she's about ready to lie. He wants this type of attention. He's living off of it. He's making money off of it. His last picture that he traced, I think he, you know, st stole it from AP. He made a hundred thousand dollars off Aww. of not being anonymous. Poor That's baby. blood money. You know, you just keep talking about him and he'll keep making his hundred thousand dollar payments. And thank you, Grace, for making him such a popular guy with people that think you're a real dipshit. So the more we talk about him and put him on TV, the more money he makes of killing Trayvon Martin. And you just keep talking about it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, let, let me turn well, back me to, you, to, to you, to you, to you, come to you in yeah. a moment, Ben. But Van Jones, th this exchange I have with him carried on, it became quite an illuminating exchange about the kind of uh, personality George Zimmerman has because I, I then said to him, he was quoting God, I said, well, since you're citing God, George Zimmerman, try this, thou shalt not kill, Exodus. So this guy, Pierce Morgan, as if he knows anything about God or the Bible, brings up a verse that says thou shalt not kill. Now, have you ever killed a fly? Have you ever killed uh, an animal for food, a fish, anything? Oh, you sinner. 20. But even more than that, did God mean not to kill in self-defense? Did God mean not to kill when an army is attacking your nation? I wonder, are there any verses out there that might suggest that God told people to kill other people? Huh, that's an interesting question. Something we'll get into another time. 13, to which he, he got into a, a little kerfuffle and said, regardless, I will see you in court. You can't shred and delete emails fast enough, amigo. 
Uh, so, so apparently there's some emails going on between them that aren't necessarily uh, shown here. And Pierce Morgan isn't going to show them. But obviously there are something. Uh, there are some things. And he said they're not being able to delete them fast enough, amigo. Pretty obvious that there's something in there that is going to cause Pierce Morgan some real sort of trouble. inferring that anyone who doesn't go along with his way of looking at this, he can sue, presumably. No, 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 that isn't how it works, Pierce. Let me tell you all about it, okay? The jury looked at it and said it was self-defense. Now, once the jury makes that statement and that decision, it is a fact, 100%, according to law, that it was self-defense. Now, when you go out and say that he is a murderer, that he killed an un unarmed teenage boy, totally is wrong. He defended his life, as was proper. So, Pierce, when you continue to rag him about this and say that he is somehow uh, breaking the law, that he did something horribly evil, including uh, including uh, what's her and Grace too. There, you know, what does she think? She just thinks because they're on TV, and she says this. You know, we're in a TV studio. We're not on. We're not in court. Does she think that she can just say whatever she wants on TV? Because it's a studio? It's the most ridiculous thing. Of course you can be sued. Yeah. Which well, I thought I mean, was an extraordinarily deluded way of looking at sure. it. Well, let, let's separate these things out, though. I think a lot of times when people go through things that are difficult, they do become more religious. They do uh, try to develop themselves spiritually. I don't challenge him for that. I think that's probably a good thing. It may be the only good thing I've heard is that he's you know, trying to do something uh, along those lines. That's a good thing. The problem is... You don't have to engage. And then when you start engaging and then you then the minute somebody says something you don't like, you think you can sue them, you think you can take them to court, you think you can do something. That's the problem. Somebody does something you don't like and then you're going to, whether it's your girlfriend, whether it's Trayvon Martin, you're going to get them. You're going to do. It's not a matter of not like. It's a matter of going on national news and smearing his name after he was acquitted 100%. It is illegal to smear people's names. Something. It's the same pattern. And the problem is you put this stuff on full display and everybody can see it and you don't understand why people well, don't I've want to have anything to do with it. You keep forgetting that all he's doing is defending himself, that the media spends hours and hours, weeks, talking about him in a negative light. And then they get angry because he comes back and says, hey, wait a minute. But, I've but got a question. Yeah, yeah, Nancy, yeah. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy. This whole business about God, did he find God after he shot Trayvon Martin and before he pulled a shotgun on his girlfriend or had a fight with his wife? And See, now she's talking about the girlfriend and the wife and all that stuff, which was all dropped. Why? Because the wife lied and we have evidence of that. She hit him in the face with the iPad. But you're not going to hear that from, from Miss Grace here. Absolutely not. You're not going to hear that the girlfriend lied about the shotgun and that there was no evidence. You're not going to hear any of that, that she wanted to get back with him right afterwards. Oh, no, we're not going to hear that. Why? Because Grace is totally a George hater. Hey, look, I will take a prayer for me anywhere I can get it. But <laughs> pulling God or Christ out of your back pocket and slinging them around... I don't, I don't know if that's think, altogether a good thing. Ben, I don't ben think Ferguson. It's slinging, I don't think it's slinging it around. I mean, you're, you're literally almost making the case for him as him saying that he's a victim because you're saying that he's a killer. Well, a court said it was self-defense. So he's not... Yeah, but he's still he, a killer, not, isn't wait, he? Let me finish, let me he's finish. He's still a killer. If you are, if you are George Zimmerman... Are, do you want You're to be really labeled as sense. a? Let me finish. Are, do you want to be labeled as a killer when the court said that it was self-defense? Nancy, you obviously don't like the opinion of the court. Piers, you obviously don't either. No, but no, if no, he, no, no. But, wait, but, wait, wait. But he ben, thinks ben, he's a ben, victim ben, because I'm you not, keep referring no, to ben, him as like ben. he's a murderer. No, Ben, I'm not. I'm not saying anything about that court decision. I've made my feelings about it clear, but that's really irrelevant. I'm disputing the fact that you don't think he's a killer. I, I'm saying that there's a difference a murderer, between being a murderer and, and, and when you act as if he went out there and just started shooting at people or walked up and killed somebody cold-blooded, there is a ben, difference a there, killer, and the court said so. Ben, a, well, what a killer do does not happened? mean murderer, does the it? The boy was a unarmed. A killer. So now Pierce is backpedaling. You see him? Oh, God, I didn't call him a murderer. I called him a killer, a killer, a killer. Well, 
hello, what do you think a killer is? You know, when you're sitting there saying that he killed an unarmed teenage boy as if it was some sort of evil thing, that's the same thing as calling him a murderer. Now, what you should have said was he killed an unarmed teenage boy in self-defense as the boy was cracking his head in the concrete. Now, that would work, and you'd get off with that. Just like with Michael Dunn, he killed an unarmed youth. You know, I, I don't know if you've but ever Nancy, tried Nancy, cases Nancy, Nancy. or dealt with... Nancy doesn't understand that the guy didn't get convicted for shooting the unarmed youth. God, man, people are... Sometimes you got to wonder. The legal system... She's supposed but, to be a but lawyer. to me, that's open and shut. You N shoot Nancy, an unarmed youth thing. dead... That's a murder. D what? Nancy, you, you're not, you're, you're totally leaving out the core part of what the jury, and thank goodness you weren't on that jury because. Oh, thank God she wasn't on the jury. She's such an idiot. And she said she's a lawyer? Because they looked at the facts and you don't want to deal with the fact that there was hey, a struggle in a fight. look around yourself. Are you in a court of law? You're in a TV studio. You... <laughs> See, she don't want to talk about the fact that in a court of law, he was found not guilty, but here in the studio and anywhere on CNN or any of the liberal left-wing media, he's guilty, and he will always be guilty. He just got off. We're not my, bound my, by the rules so of are you. We can let, tell let the Let me say something here. I'd like to say something here. First, yeah, first of all, I sure he, am. First of all, he certainly is a killer. Uh, the question is whether he is a murderer. Uh, You're all killers, every one of you. You've killed bugs. You've killed. Come the on, uh, the court ridiculous. said he's not a murderer. They said he's he's uh, was justified with self-defense using a, a law that a lot of people have objections to. Really, they have objections to self-defense. That oh yeah, you know what? From now on, these people should not have bodyguards. They should walk on the streets without any weapons. And if they get attacked, they should absolutely not defend themselves. If they do, and the person dies. They are killers. They are evil people, and we'll talk about them for years to come about how evil they are. I don't care if it's a black teenage boy that decided to try to kill you, and he was cracking your head on the concrete. I don't care. You know, if you do try to defend yourself against that, you're an evil, murdering piece of crap. The reality what is he is a killer. Freaks. Uh, he did take a life, and he has to live with that. My problem with the whole situation is... Uh, increasingly you're seeing him when he's not in the news for doing something dangerous toward a, a member of his, his girlfriend, whoever it is, or his ex-wife. And now they're bringing up these cases that have been tossed that were totally bogus women trying to get money. Why? Because this whole thing, the entire case has been about black over white. Uh, they're trying to get a race war going, and this has been the closest they can get to it. It hasn't happened yet, but they've got people going out, black people attacking white people because these black people that are attacking, and I'm telling you, it's a small minority of black people that are doing it, but the people that are doing it are complete morons. They have no brains. You see, what happens is somebody tells them this happened and immediately they jump to it and they grab it and they go with it because it fits their worldview. You see, they're racists, so they're comfortable with it. When they hear it, they jump on it. Oh, goody, goody, goody. Now we can call all white people racist, even though George isn't even pure white. You know, you got to ask yourself, is CNN interested in American unity? Do they want to see America prosper? Or are they trying to divide America and crash it? I personally think they're trying to crash it. He's now just jumping into the media for no reason at all. And I think that is a part of the... He's jumping in for no reason. So you guys have been talking about him ever since the case was over, after he got acquitted, 100%. And all you've said is negative things about him. And now you're saying he's jumping in the media? Guess what? I hope he keeps jumping in the media, and I hope he keeps pointing out how ignorant you people are, and I hope he sues every one of you to the maximum of the law. And I hope he gets every penny you have, every penny, because of what you're doing. The problem here, he well, wanted well, Van, to be a big Van, shot. Van, he wanted me... to be a big shot out yeah. there. He wanted to, to be uh, the superhero. And now he has nothing going for him but to keep relitigating this. And I think that's a big problem. Yeah, and also, we don't want to reward this stuff. It's the tone that he adopts when he does this. For instance, another tweet he sent me, Piersy, you will get exactly what you deserve, sweetheart. That's terrible. Vaguely threatening, fake bonhomie, treating the whole thing as a bit of a joke. But underline 
So he gave him what he wanted. He blocked him and ignored him. And now suddenly this is a problem. It's terrible. Playing it, a certain reactionary kind of threatening a tone. A menacing, threatening tone against someone he can't control. That's the pattern. That's what happened. And here's the thing. No matter what... Uh, Where is the threat? Well, let's scroll it back and let's look at the threat here. You will get exactly what you deserve, sweetheart. Smiley face. That's the sound of me blocking and ignoring you until we meet. So you, you want to talk to me? You come talk to me face to face. I'll bet you you're a lot nicer guy sitting here personally with me. I'll bet you. And this is one of the things that I've always said. These people on TV, they got the big mouth. And it just runs and runs and runs about all these people. Bring them on. Sit down with them. And let's hear you talk then. You know, it's not going to happen. And if Pierce does bring on George Zimmerman, He'll be a gentleman.